Science, we have ABC's correspondent Mary Bruce there in Washington. She's been covering all of those issues. Hi, Mary. Hi, guys. How are you? Happy State of the Union night. Happy State of the Union night to, new, to you. So, Mary, what's going on where you are now? This is uh, what I would describe as the calm before the storm. We're standing here in Statuary Hall, which normally uh, right about now is filled with tourists. But tonight uh, it is now jam packed with reporters, everyone getting ready, lining up, because this is the area where in just uh, about an hour and a half, you'll start to see lawmakers pouring through. They'll walk through the middle of the room here in between those velvet ropes there. All of us reporters will clamor to get to them to get uh, their thoughts ahead of the speech. And then after the speech, this is also where a lot of uh, cabinet secretaries, the the Supreme Court justices will walk through as they make their way into the chamber to hear the president's final State of the Union address. So it will get a little bit more crowded. Right now you can see everyone is uh, still setting up, getting ready for the big night ahead. Mary, it looks like there's some interviews that are already taking place there. Specifically, when the camera was panning, we saw a woman with a headscarf. We know that the Democrats have been encouraging their members to invite Muslim Americans to the State of the Union. Can you talk about that at all? Absolutely. More than 20 lawmakers, I think we're up to that number by now, have invited uh, Muslim constituents, members of the communities that they represent, to be their guests here at the State of the Union. So often the people that lawmakers bring to sit by their side uh, are meant to send a message. And in this case, obviously, it is one of inclusion. Now, perhaps that's a message aimed uh, to someone outside of these chambers, perhaps aimed to, to a certain Republican presidential candidate who has made some rather controversial comments calling for a ban on Muslims entering the U.S. Of course, we're talking about Donald Trump. Uh, but again, a lot of the guests that everyone brings, from the president to the Speaker of the House to all the way down uh, to even freshman lawmakers, are meant to underscore a message that they're sending. Often that, that's a message that is intended to boost uh, the president's agenda and oftentimes meant as a counterweight to it. Now, Mary, we know that there have been headlines today out of Iran, and a lot of the members of Congress have been saying that they'd like to hear the president talk about that tonight. Do you think that we can expect to hear from him on that issue? Not going to happen. Uh, we've heard from the White House already. They say that while the president has been briefed on this issue, he certainly uh, is staying abreast of these developments. It's not something that he plans to touch on during this address tonight. Remember, this is not going to be your uh, run-of-the-mill State of the Union, if there even is such a thing. The president is going to be focusing broadly on, on two big issues here. Uh, first, on his legacy, outlining some of the big items that he's gotten done over the last seven years, setting a, a certain frame for the election to come. And that's the second issue here. There are going to be a lot of undertones about the campaign. The president really setting the stage, arguing uh, that in order to continue the momentum, to continue along with the progress that he has made so far, uh, one should go ahead and a Democrat. So that will be the not so subtle message. We won't <laughs> say it quite as explicitly as that. I am curious about this though because it seems like, look, this is President Obama's last possible primetime national address in this way, his last State of the Union. We've seen sides of him lately in these final months in office, for instance, when he got so emotional during his comments about gun control legislation. You have to imagine this is an important speech for him tonight, that a lot rides on this in terms of how people remember him and his eight years in office. So do you think that we'll see some of that emotion tonight, some of that sort of the deeper and, and more extreme sides of, of him and his public persona? I think you absolutely will, and especially because he is going to be talking so much about his legacy, going through a list of items that he feels he has made great progress, uh, the economy, uh, steps to help grow the middle class. I'm sure you'll hear health care come up. A lot of these big ticket items that have been his signature achievements, and I'm sure you will hear some emotion. Look, this is also the president's chance to inspire the nation, to, to drum up support for his policies, and in some ways to kind of uh, set the stage for passing the baton. So yes, I think you will see some emotion. Whether it will rise to the level that we have seen in recent weeks, uh, I don't know about that. This is going to be a more optimistic, uh, a hopeful speech. I don't think you're going to see some of the tears from the president, for instance, that we saw just a few weeks ago when he was outlining some of uh, his new gun reform actions. But certainly there will be a lot of passion, I think, here tonight. Mary, when we think about tears, I can't help but think of John Boehner. And, uh, and with, <laughs> this is going to be the first State of the Union where Paul Ryan is replacing him. And I understand that you have spoken with the new Speaker of the House recently? I have, yes, we talked with him this morning. This is a big night, not only for the president, but of course for Paul Ryan. This is his first State of the Union as Speaker of the House, where he'll be sitting there over the president's shoulder. He actually told us he's been practicing his poker face. He says he is very expressive. He says he can't help it. He's Irish, but he's been trying uh, to learn how to temper some of those expressions a little bit because, of course, all eyes will be on him sitting next to the vice president, right behind the president himself. 
Did he demonstrate that poker face to you, Mary? <laughs> he did actually. I won't. I won't dare to do it justice. But, oh come but yeah, on! He, he did demonstrate it. It is a good one. He also has been uh, asking the public for help a little bit. He put out a call to his Twitter followers, asking them what color tie he should wear. I can tell you that red is the color of the night. He tweeted out a picture a short while ago of him donning his red tie. But, but look, you know, these kind of jokes aside, this is also a, a chance for Republicans tonight to also try and set the stage for the year to come. Uh, the Speaker of the House told us earlier today that they feel it's very important that they get their message across tonight as well, that they show that they are a party with, with clear ideas, a clear agenda of their own, and that they can present a clear choice uh, to voters that is you know, not the alternative to, to maybe some of the proposals that the president will be outlining here tonight. And you will hear that later uh, from Governor Haley when she gives uh, her, her response, or as they put it, the Republican address to later tonight. Mary, I'm sure it's only a matter of time before Paul Ryan's poker face has its own Twitter handle, and we can follow that <laughs> later tonight, too. But I do want to ask you, start following that right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's claiming it. Um, I do want to ask you, because you mentioned Governor Haley. This is obviously a very deliberate, specific choice the Republican Party makes every year of who will deliver that response or address, as they call it. So what does the selection of Nikki Haley say about where the party is right now? Well, it is interesting to note she's now the third woman in a row to deliver the address. These addresses are, are a tough, uh, delicate walk to, to, or line to walk here because you'll remember uh, often there these addresses are remembered more for the missteps rather than the message themselves. You'll recall Marco Rubio grabbing that glass of water, Bobby Jindal's uh, rather awkward walk up to the podium. So in a lot of ways, the goal of whomever is delivering the Republican address tonight is simply uh, not to have any stumbles, not to fumble at all. But but Republicans do view this, as I said, as a chance to turn the page, a chance to, to outline why they believe they are a, a, a party of such strong ideas, why they think uh, they should be a, a, a good counterweight to the president's message tonight and what they can offer uh, voters in the coming year. We'll be watching both the address and the response. And of course, checking back in with you, Mary, that's ABC News's congressional correspondent, Mary Bruce, live in Washington.